Hi, everybody. I'm here kibitzing with Paramal, as you recognize him. We haven't been together for the last uh, couple of weeks, as many of you would realize. Although I was here last week talking about a workshop that I had done in Sedona. And mm -hmm. I promised last Tuesday that this Tuesday, I would actually talk about even a more recent workshop in Moab, Utah. Mm. Have you ever been, Paramal, to Moab? I have not been to Moab. I've been to Utah and a few other places, but not Moab and not Sedona either. Okay, well, you've had a lot of travel left ahead. Yeah. And uh, you just were in Zion National Park. That's right. I was in Zion and Bryce and uh, Lake Powell Antelope Canyon kayak with my son. I took him out for spring, spring break. Did you bring and him back? I did have to bring him back. Yeah, he has a mom, okay. so I had to bring him back. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. uh, you know, in our more abridged uh, versions of tequila time, because uh, my staff tells tells me I go on and on and on. <laughs> I uh, think that's the way to of enjoy it. But no, my staff is getting tired of it. So they said, just move on, you know, make your points and get off. That's what they say to me. And okay. words can be hurtful. Words can be hurtful. I think it's their way of telling me to shut up is, I, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> Okay, well, at any rate, let me uh, figure out, let me see, I have to put my glasses on and they're full of, green, you know, in between Earth is my witness and this one, I've, I gulp, gulped down four chicken tacos. Wow. And I put my hands on my glasses and now they're like smudged with uh, grease. But those chicken tacos are appropriate with tequila, right? They are. Okay. All right, so I'm going to screen share here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get going. I'm getting so smooth. I'm even, You are a pro now. Look at that. Oh, my God. I'm so amazing. <laughs> Any rate, <laughs> Moab Workshop, April 9th through the 12th. And, you know, it was so great. Uh, this was our fourth workshop in a row. It was great to get out and actually interact with people, teach them, have a great time, eat good food. You know, all those things that we were missing over the last uh, year. So I'm happy. I'm happy when I'm teaching. I've got another workshop in a week and a half up at Port Townsend. Then we go down to Bandon. We go down to Astoria again, Crescent City, Carmel. Oh my God, I'm gonna, you know, you never die if you've got a workshop coming up. That's true, that's a good idea. So Moab is famous for uh, two things, Canyonlands National Park, and this is part of Canyonlands. It's where the uh, Colorado River comes uh, winding southward, southward, and the Green River meet up, and they form the mighty Colorado. And that then heads west and south into the Grand Canyon, mm -hmm. and where many people get on rafts and they go have a great time. But this open uh, vista and beautiful uh, landscapes, barren of trees. You know, there's trees in some canyons. This is shot from what they call Dead Horse Point, and it offers this unbridled view of the landscape to the west and the south. And these are just typical landscapes. If you go to Moab, you would see this. And uh, just the way the, uh, the millennia has allowed the rivers to carve out the landscape. And of course, as you know, I always look for the abstract. I'm always looking for details and shadows and textures and patterns. And that's what we really concentrate. You know, we get a playing field of Canyon Lands and Arches National Park, but after we get those uh, big vistas kind of out of the way, the real work begins with shooting the details, going into places where the average visitor to Moab probably wouldn't even consider. Mm -hmm. And in this first evening, we're shooting beautiful details of, and I get choked up when I talk about it. I'm getting verklempt, I need tequila. Okay, well, just look at that picture. <laughs> I'm to jump in here anytime. It's a good picture. The previous one was a good picture. The one before that was also a good picture. Are you back? <laughs> Poor Paramal just talked with uh, Daniel Beltra and me for an hour and now I'm just on a roll, right? You, there's no words. Getting, oh, come on, jump in. You can talk. <laughs> just say art. 
looking at that photo is like looking into the face of God. Say that. <laughs> your multiple Hindu gods. At any rate, beyond the big landscapes, which everybody goes to Moab to get or to ride bicycles or to what, whatever outdoor sport they're doing, from my perspective and what I want to try to accomplish with my participants is, yeah, we're going to get the big uh, landscapes, but mostly we're going after the shots, the subjects that most people that go there will never see or even consider. I mean, that is always my MO, whether it's the Olympic National Park, Mount Rainier, wherever we're taking people, we're after something that's a little less predictable. And in this particular evening, we were really concentrating on the way these amazing ancient junipers cling to the edges of these walls that might be two, 3,000 feet. Mm. And just, they're ancient. I mean, they just have only a little bit of them um, with a, a very small strip of bark keeps them alive. And that's what's remarkable about it. And so look at this one. It's just cantilevered out over this expanse. So I love these trees. And as you know, I did a book call on trees of the world a couple of years ago. So mm -hmm. I keep on shooting for the next version of that. It's beautiful. And one of our uh, participants who also joined us just the last couple of days down back in Sedona. So we're after the details, you know, the textures, the lines we're going in. And there's so many beautiful uh, marbled lines that, uh, of different minerals that run through the landscape. And then there's the stains and lichens that further enhance these landscapes. So these are all my photos and I use them to kind of uh, energize and to prepare the participants for what they're about to shoot. And I'm going to get onto their work in just a few moments. But these are the kind of shots that I'm excited about. And as you remember, I'm working on a book of faith and so I'm shooting the uh, pictographs and the petroglyphs that are throughout this region of America. And undoubtedly some of these paintings represent shamans or belief mm. systems that could easily be fit into that book. And this is a, you know, that previous image is a painting on a rock uh, above the town of Moab and this, these are petroglyphs, which are uh -huh. carvings yeah. into the rock. I love this image, like this particular one with the gray and the orange, almost blue and orange. It's just very interesting. Yeah, and the gray is actually called rock varnish. And so ancient Pueblans would go in and carve uh, these shapes in that darker rock, and then the lighter minerals would show and contrast through. Mm. And there's another vi a version of that same dark rock varnish that you're seeing. So you can see some of these figures uh, have horns and I, I would have to uh, surmise that they represent maybe uh, chiefs of the tribe or shamans. Yeah. And these are thousands of years old, you know, five to 8,000 years ago, uh, these were carved on the walls and those Paintings could even be older. They are from the Fremont culture. And I love this bear image, you know, and I shot it through the branches of a juniper and then just straight forward. Wow. So, you know, there's a immediacy of rock art and rock paintings throughout the world. And I've been photographing them as much as I've been traveling from uh, Africa, North and South America and Australia. So it's it's been a, quite a collection that I'm amassing. Who knows, someday there could be a book on that. Oh, that'd be cool. <clears throat> and you really know how old some of these are by the fact that lichens are growing over the top of them and lichen are among the oldest living plants on earth. So they are very slow growing. And so when they inhabit the petroglyphs of bighorn sheep, as you see here, that really tells you how old they are. Hmm. So that's just one of the bonuses of working in the Southwest. And then there's, and I showed a little bit of this last week with the Sedona workshop. We go in and we find little pockets of water along creeks and canyons. We photograph them like this and then we invert them into verticals. And oh, it's wow. almost like a Rorschach uh, 
abstract or those kaleidoscopes that we used to play with as kids. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Very cool. So, yeah, it's kind of, you know, a lot of it's inspired by the works of Giorgio O'Keefe and not necessarily this one. This one almost looks like this big ogre of an animal with uh, slit eyes and a big proboscis nose. So is this a reflection too that you have? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. These are all reflections. Wow. It takes a whole different meaning when you invert it. Yeah, oh, it absolutely does. And it's as smart as you know I am. And if you don't know, I'll often tell you, <laughs> I cannot predict what they're going to look like when they're inverted or, you know, take a horizontal and make it a vertical like this. Wow. But this is, this is the kind of thing that re reminds me of some of Georgia O'Keeffe's paintings, you know, very solid earth toned paintings. Wow. That one almost looks like Darth Vader's helmet. Yep. Yes. And then very long exposures, uh, intentional exposures in the small streams that come out of the mesas and the canyons. And, uh, you know, we really try to push our participants to see the art of any element, any subject. And so this is intentionally blurred motion from the movement of the water and the reflection of, of branches. Um, this is up in Arches National Park, which you will get to someday and uh, beautiful rocks. And at night we, we had a moonless evening or several moonless evenings. So several of the nights we were out uh, photographing the heavens. It's beautiful. So that was my contribution. And now I'm gonna show some of the, the work of the participants. You know, we're working in shadows early and late because when the sun comes up, it is brutally clear. And as you know, and I've said often, it's the sun that really uh, turns a complex landscape into an almost impossible landscape to process. Uh, and so we get up early, we get in the shadows, we work in the shadows. These are some of Diane Marsh's uh, photos. She's a, a lady from Port Townsend where we're gonna be in a week and a half. I love this image, mm. uh, the contrasting this tree in the sunlight against some of those rock formations in the, in the shadows. And she did very well with this uh, nighttime shot of, um, God, I forget what this part of Arches is called. It's a, a I'll, I'll come, when it comes to my mind, I'll yell it out just like Tourette's. Nora Rudin had- oh, nice. Oh, I love this one. I mean, it is beautiful, it's abstract, and it's just the way she framed it and shot it. And uh, Nora has been with us on several workshops early last year and again this year. And just the advancing and the changes in her work is very apparent from workshop to workshop. It's beautiful. I, I love this image. And from uh, Dead Horse Point, she's using the lines of the, uh, the shadows to bring your eye throughout that entirety of the image. And again, textures, lines, patterns, she's heard that ad nauseum. And she was managing to get that star burst through this old juniper and the sun setting. Aravin Krishna Swami, and I hold my breath. Have you ever, do you know any of your fellow Indians that have that name? Yes, I do. That's a common name, right? It is not extremely common, but it's common. Yeah, Krishna Swami, you know. Yeah, well, Aravind, like uh, Nora, has been in several of our workshops as of late. He's from the Bay Area, as is Nora. And I love this one. It's almost like a uh, abstraction of a, a praying mantis with uh, boxing gloves. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice image. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I like to say and, uh, and show how these things that take on their own uh, aura, their own character, they override. Once you make an association of these abstracts that look like somebody or some animal or some element, it's almost impossible to look at them otherwise. Mm. Aravan's uh, oh, beautiful. Yeah. Aravan and I have very similar tastes. 
And it's funny, I'll, I'll take an image and I know he's nowhere around. And at the end of the day, he may have exactly the same image. Mm. So we have very similar tastes. Lovely. He loves to play with posit or uh, color schemes, orange and uh, blue in this case, obviously. And one of his uh, works from the Sedona workshop. Very nice. Bill Orger has been with us all over the world and is a great guy. He's from Oregon. And I love this version of these uh, arches in Arches National Park is double, I think it's called double arch. But at any rate, just that broader perspective and uh, choosing to make it a uh, panoramic was great. Mm -hmm. And I love the way he's captured this cottonwood tree kind of arching over this rock in this canyon. And it also belies the fact that we're up early and in the shadows because a couple hours later, this whole area would be flooded by sunlight and all those really subtle pastels of greens and pinks would be just gone. So, yeah. And I and, and this is called a Newspaper Rock. It's down in Canyonlands. And it's a nice combination of the rock, but also the sun coming up over the ridge above it. Very nice. And uh, I think this shot is also from Newspaper Rock, but you can also see how vandals have come in and etched their name. This one, JR, was in 1955, probably before people really thought about protecting these very famous historical uh, points. Hmm. Alejandro Robles is... Uh, a very nice gentleman. I love this shot because he probably shot it as an accident, but was smart enough to enter it into the critique. But I just love the shot. It's just, you know, you have to kind of look at what's going on to figure it out. And in this image, it's, if you look at it, you almost can see uh, the eye, the nose, and the double chins of an old per wise person locked into the rock with long tendrils of hair. And if you can't see that, drink some more tequila. <laughs> yes. The more you drink, the more you start to recognize that person. I love the color palette too. It's a very interesting color palette, you know? Yeah, well, you know, and all the minerals on the rock. And now you can see this uh, view across the Colorado, how placid that river can be. And as it goes down streams and courses its way through Arizona, it's a raging torrent. But right here, very nice reflections. And in the distance, you can see the walls and the rock varnish, that dark, dark uh, uh, layer over the rock that the native uh, North Americans would carve into. And Alejandro's last shot is of the uh, stars over. And, you know, we're not bringing light to this, but car headlights are coming around the bend and illuminating the rock during a 30 second exposure. Mm. Cal Holman uh, is, uh, was doing a study again of uh, complementary colors, orange and blue, texture of the water. And I love this shot because it reminds me of a Picasso painting, this distorted face that he's found in an old wood fence post. Yeah, very interesting, yeah. So these participants are having a great time and you can just see the variety oh, yeah. of work they're doing. And in Arches National Park, there's a rock called Nefertiti. Is that? I'm looking at my uh, fellow workers here and they've got this quizzical <laughs> face on them. You know, one of the queens of ancient Egypt. Nefertiti? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's it. Nefertiti? Okay, I'm gonna quit while I'm behind and drink more tequila. David Rice is a fellow Seattleite that's ventured south with us. And uh, we've had him on numerous workshops. I love this one, the reflection of a mesa and the rocks, and it just confuses the eye. And so people have to kind of stay with it to figure yeah. it out. Liquid gold is a beautiful image. It is. That's a great uh, title for that, liquid gold. And these are the, uh, from the Fremont culture, very old. And, you know, they mixed uh, water with uh, some of the clays of the environment or even berries. And they created these dyes that they painted on the rock 
And then with time and uh, thousands of years, the uh, paint became part, uh, became mineralized. So mm. it's very hard to carbon date these paintings, but they're very, very old. And some of uh, David's abstracts. Oh, nice. Yeah, I like that one. Very nice. And again, that one cantilever tree. He actually found that. Then I came over and moved him out of the way so I could shoot it. Yeah, that's a good idea. And the yeah, that's the kind of person I am. The images. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the boss here. I'm teaching them workshop. Get away. Walk <laughs> away. Step away from the tree. That's what I said. <laughs> I love this shot of Matthews because when I look at that, if you really look at that, it does look like some sort of ungulate looking straight at you. Yeah. You can see the eyes, the horns, the uh, nose. You see that? Yes, I do. Yeah, I think it's quite elegant. And it's just a little bit of minerals uh, along a creek's edge. So to have that vision to see that and shoot it that way is great. Mm. And Matthew does really well with, you know, the geologic formations and the colors and the lines within. Janae Bennett has a real strong sense of graphic detail and lights and darks. And yeah, I was peeing along the stream. And when I walked away, she would moved in and start photographing. So, you know, it's kind of a nice combination of uh, urgency and uh, usefulness. You should try peeing now and having someone take a photo. It might be like an interesting color combination. Always there, aren't you, Paramount? <laughs> <laughs> Give us advice. And I love this one of Janae's. I mean, I, I think that's a really nice graphic detail. Yeah. Linda Parker, actually, you know those antlers in my living room? Hmm. Yeah. You, you know, I do. I do. Yeah. She carried 50 years ago, she and I carried those antlers out of the Olympics. So here she is again, Linda photographing uh, abstracts and uh, doing a great job, the stars over arches. And she also took, and because she was watching um, Earth is Our Witness, she watched the show with Nevada Weir and mm -hmm. doing uh, um, infrared, and she took a course from Nevada. Wow. And this is uh, the result of that. Hey, we should ask for some commission kickbacks from Nevada. Oh, I'm on it, I'm on it. I'm thinking Nevada's got to kick back to me, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, it's really nice. And her husband, Fred, is photographing trees in a very different way for a different project. And I've known Fred just almost as many years. Mm. So it's kind of nice to go through life and journeys with people you've known 50 years. They didn't like me then. They still don't like me now. But, you know, they wanted to see Moab. Yeah. <laughs> Anything from Moab. It shows that passion for Moab. Yeah, it's only about Moab. <laughs> I happen to be there and they put up with that. But I love these abstracts that Fred was able to get. And finally, the last show to photo is we get up under these arches and photograph the stars. And it's just such a primal, uh, primordial landscape. And to have, you know, a moonless night is just perfect. Or as Libby would say, the bomb. <laughs> So that's that's our little journey to Moab. Very uh, nice. Half ago. Very nice. I love these images of your students and workshop participants. It's really nice. Thank Enjoy you. it. Thank you. How do we make our heads bigger here? Yeah. I think Red button. Oh, there you go. Did I just turn us off? It was no, no, you're all good. Button. All good. All good. I'm in the dark now. <laughs> oh well, thanks, Kyle. Anyway, <laughs> if you can hear me. That's it. We'll see you next week. It's still live. Oh, it's still live. Okay. It's still live. It's still live. <laughs> Kyle earns big bucks telling me to turn off the wrong buttons. <laughs> oh, I got a question. Yeah, most of you don't know what Kyle looks like because you've got a hand coming through. At <laughs> any rate, uh, <clears throat> what were you saying? My question, I had, I had one question before we let you go. All right. So, you were going to talk about Moab and Utah and what one would have expected is Moab, Utah type shots only. Yeah. Instead, what we saw is that plus a lot more variety. 
right? Abstracts, water, you know, um, rock art, so much more variety. Is that, so I guess my question is, does that make one a better photographer? I probably is a leading question. Uh, here, here's, let me paraphrase my question. Let's say you were to, let's say someone is a landscape photographer, but by doing other genres of photography, does that actually make them an even better landscape photographer? No, when they are following my lead and shooting the things I'm telling them, they actually become worse photographers. <laughs> no, that's the whole thing. Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's the tequila. I haven't had a tequila. It's the tequila. In a week you're, and I'm yeah, you're, you're out of practice with tequila, clearly. Yeah, I'm such a rank amateur. So, yeah, I mean, we were just a couple of days ago in Jerome photographing old abstract cars but not really the cars, it's all the metal and the reflections. Yeah. And I would say to them though, that when they get back to shooting the landscapes, they may be more tuned in to the subtleties within the landscape. And that can't help but make them better observers and therefore better photographers. Yep. Yeah, that's absolutely the mission. And I'd also say to them, especially when we were up in uh, Sedona in a river Creek where there are a lot of hikers walking by, I said, every time somebody stops and say, what are you photographing? That's a badge of honor. If they have to ask, they certainly are not seeing what you're seeing. And that's a good thing because if everybody sees the same thing, we're all just up on that Mesa shooting the same viewpoint. But I want to push people into all sorts of different directions, but more importantly, to see the things that they may not have seen before. And that's, that's a great thing. Great answer. Makes sense. Thank you. It actually sobered me up. <laughs> totally. Such a, such a deep, insightful question, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, um, the way you formed your words on your lips, that was really quite amazing to me. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're going to stop Good, right it's there. It's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So next Tuesday, we're going to have Earth is our witness and tequila time, just like this time. Absolutely. And what are you going to then I get to get my 5.30 time block back after Tom. After that, after Tom, yes. Yeah, I mean, Tom's so back. old, he has to do it early because he will fall asleep around 8 p.m. <laughs> I hope Tom's Maybe. not watching that. <laughs> makes sense, makes sense. You can All have right. a slot back. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks, Paramal. Bye. <laughs>